All right. Good morning again, church. Um, and for those of you joining us online, my name is Chrissy Extra. For those who don't know me, um, and I have had the pleasure to know you, my brother, John, um, as you guys know, he's out one more week, so um, he's just not me today. But he is at home with his wife and his brand new little baby boy, Tucker Paul, and his little girl, Ella. So I'm doing great. We're excited to have him back next week. Um, but we're excited that you're here today uh, to grow deep roots and to share God's love. If you're worshiping with us online, we ask that you uh, register. And if you're in person, please pull out those phones. There's QR codes that you can scan or you can go to creekwoodumc.org slash register. And there's also an opportunity there to enter in your prayer requests. And we'd love to hear all that you have, all your choice and your concerns. So please share them with us. And then once you're done, please put those away. Let's put away all the distractions. Let's come back and worship. Living God 
and lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord has given us an opportunity to respond to God's blessing on us by giving back to God as a portion of what God has given to us through our offering, a time of offering. Um, if you are worshiping with us online or in person, you can go on the website, go to creekwoodbc.org slash give for a number of ways to uh, give. And then if you are here in person, we have our offering baskets here at the front. We've got two in the back. There's a little silver can on this one and on the back there's some missions. And that money will go to our missional focus for the month, which is Cornerstone Ranch, a community uh, that services adults with special needs. Um, it's just past um, Heritage Ranch here at Fairview and really a great reputation. So we feel led uh, to give that. You can put in the silver buckets or get online to the missions fund. Um, but again, I invite you to give and give generously because I truly believe that we have a wonderful mission here uh, to share God's love with the world. So let us bless our offering. Let's ask God to bless Gracious God, please put your blessing upon each gift of song, each gift of love, each gift of the money that is given to the plate, each gift where we have to be flexible with each other, each gift of a person that is here and all around us in the world. Add your blessing upon us so that we might be about your kingdom and not our own. And it's in your sense that we pray. Amen.
At what age do you think God started loving them? When they were first born? What do y'all think? At what age did God start loving the graduates? You don't think that like when they turned five, God started loving them, like up until they were five? But it's like when they turned five, they like heard that God loved them? No, no, you're absolutely right. I think I've you all like have crazy answers, and you don't. Um, God loved them from the very beginning, right? Even before they were born. God, I know, crazy. When God was creating all the things, God knew that God was going to create the likes of Rahas. And do you remember in Genesis 1, when God's creating all the things, what does God call everything? He uses the word, he creates something, and he says that it is terrible, bad. No, what does he say? It's good. Yeah, so when God was creating Alexa Brahas, God created Alexa Brahas and said, she is good. And now, here's the thing. It's not just for graduates, right? How old do you think you were when God started loving you? You were from the very beginning. Before you were born, when you were in your mommy's tummy, even. God knew you, and God knew that Carter was going to be good, and God knew that Jackson was going to be good, and God loved you. So God knew that you were going to be here, that you were good. What? Oh, you and Jackson still fight? That's okay. God still thinks you're good. That's why we have rights. It's such an important thing, right? So no matter, get this, Carter, no matter how often you and your brother fight, do you know who's still going to be there at the end of the day to forgive you? Jesus, you're absolutely right. You've got this down there. So today, here's the thing. When we celebrate the graduates in a minute, I'm going to need you all to give me a paper. Okay, we're going we're to have them come up here, and they're going to say their name or where they're graduating from. And I want us to cheer so loud and clap for them, and we're so excited for them. But if you see them after church, graduates, wait again. All right, memorize them. If you see them after church, what I want you to tell them, Instead of telling them congratulations for their graduation, which we are so excited about, I want you to tell them that God has loved you since the very beginning. Because today, if you're celebrating all of the things that the graduates have done and all of the tests that they've taken and the homework that they've done, but we are celebrating that they are loved and they are welcome here just because they are God's and that God loves them. And we celebrate that like for all the faces. In the congregation today, right? Every, is there anybody in here that God doesn't love? Right. So, when you see the graduates later, tell them congratulations, but also tell them God has loved you since the very beginning, even if you fight with your brother. All right, let's pray. Can you repeat after me? All right, ready? Dear God, thank you for our graduates. Thank you for helping them learn, study, and work hard. Be with us as we celebrate them. Thank you for loving us from the very beginning. Amen. Thank you. So many directions. 
Um, I want to read the names of all of our graduates and then the ones that are uh, present. We're going to pass a microphone and let you see their face um, and hear, hear their name and the school they graduated from. If you're comfortable, you may take off your mask so they can see your face. Feel free to wear that. That makes you more comfortable. Um, our high school graduates are Braden Bonner, Alexa Barajas, Shelley Bartholomew, Jack Brown, Owen Burnett, George Burris, Devin Cantu, Christian Hartwell, Tristan Carlo, Anna Ivanelli, Alex McCaffney, Megan McNeil, Sarah Michael, Amelia Colton, and Kirsten Streisel. We had some people recognized in our 8.30 service, and we know that with our um, live stream difficulties this morning, they cannot see this great collage that you can see, so we want to make sure that they hear all of their names. Um, I'm going to come close to you. I do not have my mask on. I am vaccinated. I'll stay kind of right here. I'm going to pass this microphone, and if you will just say your name and the high school that you're graduating from so our congregation can, can see your face, that would be great. You just pass out. Um, hello, my name is Alexa Barajas, and I'm graduating from Lovejoy High School. Hi, I'm Amelia Poulton. I'm graduating from Lovejoy High School. I'm Alex McCaffney, and I'm graduating from Lovejoy High School. I'm George Burris, and I'm graduating from Lovejoy High School. I'm Caroline Waldrop, but I'm graduating from Texas Tech High School. I'm Anna Ivanelli, and I'm graduating from Lovejoy High School. So be looking for their faces. I don't read the names of our college graduates. These are both bachelor's and master's degrees. We have both. Abraham Duick, Heather Cantu, Reed Frazier, Mary Fesca, Nicole Genrich, Brandon Merrill, Zachary McCormick, Kirsten, Kirsten Munson, Ali Bachelor, Darius Mornasabi, and Emily Schreiner. We know that we have many that perhaps we did not get information on, um, and if that is the case, uh, feel free to email us and let us know. We want to celebrate every single graduate. We have special things for them, and want to lift up every single one of them um, this morning. Um, graduates, high school graduates, if I can ask you one more time to just stand up right where you are. I didn't want to leave you on the stage too long. Um, we would love to pray a blessing over you. Yes, stand up right where you are. Um, those of you online, uh, we saw their faces Keep their faces in your mind, um, and I ask all of you, um, no matter where you're gathered, worshiping with us this morning, um, to pray a blessing over all of these graduates with us. I feel better, guys. Loving God, we thank you for every single graduate, both the ones that we saw this morning in worship, whose faces we see and celebrate, and those that are worshiping online, those that are away in the town that they are graduating from and with family and friends. This morning, we pray special blessings on them, on the journey, the chapter that is closing, and the journey that is beginning. God, we know that in each and every one of these steps and plans, you are there. 
Help us to encourage them along the way and to remind them that they are so loved, not only by Creekwood, but by God. That they are special, they are valued, and we love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's cool to see, uh, I've been here six years, and so these uh, graduates were in seventh grade when I got here. It's cool to see uh, the first time I ever met George Burroughs, he was crawling under tables as we led VBS together. Uh, but the last time we led VBS together was a science astronomy based one, and George led the class on that. So it's cool to see just how they've matured. And, uh, I, several of them I can share memories with. Alex McCaffrey is one of the reasons why I don't handle them. Uh, so well. So Alex, you have been a blessing in my life. Uh, allow me to share our scripture verse for today. It's from the letter of Paul to the Philippian Church in chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for all God's people. Let us say, thanks be to God. It is such an honor and a privilege to share a message on a day as special as today. As our pastor of student and family ministries, being able to be around each and every one of these students and their families, to just absorb their knowledge and their senses of humor and enjoy funny things together from Bible study to traveling, it's all so special. And even those of you that I have not come to know very well yet, there are not quite words to explain just how proud of you we are. I invite you this morning to go back to childhood, and whether that was 50, 20, 5 years ago, or 5 minutes, I want you to think for just a moment about that place that you were able to just be a kid. Now, was it church? Maybe, I hope so. That would be great, because the first place that you pops, pops into your head is church. It may have been a neighbor's house. It may have been a family member that just let you be you and loved you for being silly. It might have been someone that you haven't spoken to in years, but I bet you remember those memories. Can you remember the first time that maybe you messed up, or you did or said something that maybe you shouldn't have, and someone just looked you right in the face and was still able to smile and say that they loved you? For me, it was my grandparents. It was just that place filled with grace. I had a wonderful home, and my parents loved me, and I always knew that, thankfully, at home. But my grandparents was just different. It was one of those places, um, my grandparents had a farm in Emory, Texas, where now my, my family lives. And as you can imagine, on a farm, they had many animals, um, cattle and chickens, um, a five-acre um, stock tank filled with fish that they loved to fish in. And I have all white cousins, I'm the only girl, and um, I know that it's surprising to you, but we sometimes got in trouble. There might have been several instances I can recall of letting animals out of where they were supposed to go. Um, cattle through the yard, or chickens in the house, or you know, those, those things happen, right? That's normal with my a lot, sure. <laughs> but our grandparents handled that with such grace. They just loved us, and it was just a place that even when we were silly or made mistakes or maybe had a little um, too much fun, um, we always knew that they were just there. They were going to forgive us. They were going to love us. I can recall my grandfather's face on a couple different occasions. Um, definitely the cows. That was a big one. Um, where he just looked at us. And at first, I thought he was going to have steam coming out of his ears that he had cattle in front of his house, but that was not where they go. Did you know that? And he just looked at us, and I saw his face relax, and he kind of sighed, 
And he said that he loved us, and he walked away. And that might have been so that he could be angry somewhere else and let my grandmother deal with us, but he did, he smiled, and he walked away. <laughs> and I remember, I knew that we were in trouble, I knew that um, you gotta close gates when you open them, that's just how that works, particularly in the country. But there was just something special about knowing that that was always a safe place to be. And I hope that you can think of some place like that, where you just had that grace. This scripture that Pastor David shared with us this morning is the Apostle Paul writing a letter to the people of Philippi. And in this letter, remembering these people that he's done ministry with, that he's not with at the moment, he didn't get to see them very often. He writes, starting in verse 3, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul knew that these people told others about the gospel of Jesus Christ. They told other people how they were loved, and they shared that love. And he remembered that and thought of that even when he wasn't with them. Much like these places that we were allowed to be children, allowed to be silly, allowed to make mistakes, they sit with us even now, even though we have grown away from that age Maybe moved away. Maybe those people have passed away. And we remember them. We remember being able to just be loved. Apostle Paul goes on to say, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you, God, the one who began a good work in you, will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. So the important thing here is Apostle Paul points out that our work is not complete. The one that's completing the work is Jesus. That means that Jesus knows we make mistakes. God created us in God's own image, but knows that we fall short and offers forgiveness anyway. Knows that the work is completed through Jesus and not through us. So when we start to talk about this idea of perfection, something that John Wesley, the, as I like to call, accidental founder of Methodism, um, often talked about this journey toward perfection, becoming perfect in God's love. And John Wesley wholeheartedly believed that he would become perfect in Jesus' love. Well, when we think of perfection, whether we admit it or not, we think of worldly perfection. We look around us, we compare ourselves to other people. You know that I can't say that without bringing up social media. We compare ourselves to someone else's Instagram. These pictures that look perfect, forgetting that before and after that picture it was probably a very different scenario. Perfect perfection is not about Who's next to us? It's not about how we stack up to someone else because we are all created in God's image. Perfection is about doing this good work that Apostle Paul wrote about. And beginning a good work, though we say beginning, we think of one point in time. Beginning a good work is not one time. Because we are human, we must begin the good work every day. Every day that we get out of bed, we have a new morning, we begin the good work again. And when we mess up, we accept that grace freely given by Jesus Christ. We accept the forgiveness, and we begin the good work again tomorrow. So graduates, specifically to you this morning, I hope that you hear how proud every single one of us are. And your families sitting next to you, your peers graduating with you, the underclassmen that you leave behind to take over those clubs and organizations in the school that you love. And even those that went before you, perhaps to some of the same campuses that you are journeying to. All of these people are a piece of your journey and you are a piece of theirs. And I hope that you truly know this morning that every single one of you matter. God began a good work in you when God created you. And you continue to begin that good work every day by following Jesus, 
Not just by the paths you choose and the things you do, though they are amazing. You journey toward perfection in embodying Jesus' love to other people. I can only imagine the way that the children looked up at you this morning, trying to see their faces when they looked out and spotted you in the crowd. They are proud. They want to be like you. Not necessarily because of the campus that you're going to or the job that you're going to continue working after you graduate, but because you're here and you smile and they see love in you. So those of you that are going off to distinguished campuses across the country, congratulations. We are so proud of your choice and your journey. For those of you who are going straight to work and working full time, whether you're moving away or staying here, congratulations to you. That is a good work begun. Those of you brave enough to just take a year and figure out, discern what is for you next, whether that means working or taking classes or traveling, congratulations to you for what you have accomplished and for distinguishing and discerning what is next for you. Every one of you are on the path to perfection not because of just what you choose, but because you're following Jesus. Now, congregants, parents, children, Sunday school teachers, everyone else who's here in the sanctuary or watching online, this goes for us too. We might want to just point to the younger generations and say, oh, they're the ones that are so hung up in social media and comparing themselves to others. Oh no, I'm talking to you, to us as well. We do the same things. We get hung up on what's going on with someone else in our company, with a coworker, with a peer, with a family member. Sometimes things pop up in our newsfeed and you're like, why can't that be me? I do it, we all do it. We have to remember that this path for perfection, this good work begun in us, is all about being like Jesus. Not someone on Instagram or Twitter, but being like Jesus. So I invite you this morning that though you might not be at this pinnacle milestone in your life like our graduates, you get to begin a new work every day and continue the good work that Jesus made in you. You can do the same thing. Remind yourself not to compare yourself to other people, but to model your actions and your love after Jesus himself. We're so proud of the way that love is shown through each and every one of you. Through the ways that we reach out not only to help those in this congregation and our community, but across the world. We also know that there is so much more to be done. There are people to reach, there are good deeds to do. There are people that need to feel love in the world. And that's why we leave this this place every week and go out into the world and do what we do, different professions, different callings, so that others will know Jesus through us. So remember that the good work begun in you continues by following Jesus Christ. Can you pray with me? Living God, we thank you for the good works in us. We ask, when we look in the mirror, when we see ourselves, Help us to see not only our reflection, but to see you in us. And to know that this good work begun is because of Jesus. God, we know that we were not meant to complete the work. Jesus, you did that for us. And our journey to being perfect is following you, sharing love, and sharing grace. Amen. Just a few announcements before we sing our closing song and, and go about to share God's love in the world. But one is, um, if you are on that step and that journey toward when we will eventually celebrate you as a graduate, Confirmation 2022.
Registration is open. That's generally for seventh graders. So if you will be starting from seventh grade uh, come August, we'd love for you to go online and register for confirmation or check with Donna Bartholomew and you can register for that. Confirmation is uh, in the Methodist Church, a year-long exploration of doctrine and faith and theology and what it means to be a church uh, member, what it means to be a Christian in the world, and it is really a great group to uh, be a part of. They go visit other faith experiences, other Christian denominations, and explore what Methodism looks like in comparison. So uh, onward to the decision about whether they want to be full members in the church. I see Corbin Boyd over here. He went through it two years ago. So, uh, and Natalia Bates went through it this year. So uh, if you have questions, go ask them. Um, they are the experts more so than I am and I am on confirmation. But so we go register for that starting now. We love any early registration, any information we get early always helps us out. Uh, cookbooks for the missions fundraiser are going to be, uh, should be available next week, as well as the t-shirts that you pre-ordered and everything. Again, this goes to uh, fund our missional efforts uh, that we do out in the community, like Cornerstone Ranch, or like our work with uh, Habitat for Humanity, or Zoe Empower. So, um, cookbook, you can see what it looks like right here. It has enough to fill your plate for almost an entire year, I feel like, and you might gain some weight, too, uh, if you don't watch that. It is really awesome, and uh, Carolyn and her mission team did a really good job on this. So that will be available next week. There will be extras that you can um, uh, purchase as well if you want to help with the effort. And then last but not least, our family ministries um, in kind of navigating uh, what summer looks like in a COVID time with different different data that we even had recently. Um, put together uh, some in-person and virtual experiences for uh, students to uh, engage in God's love this week. Uh, this summer we've got virtual VBS that's going to come June 14th through 17th. Uh, and then we've got several in-person experiences, including, uh, there's more than actually on the screen right now, but there's going to be a lot of uh, themed summer movie nights. Uh, so we're going to have one that is uh, Beat the Heat, and so it'll be snow cones and Ice Age and uh, things like that. So we encourage you to take part in a lot of in-person and virtual opportunities this summer, uh, whatever your comfort level is with those. Most of the in-person stuff will be outside as well, um, just to continue in our safe pattern. So uh, with that, I invite you to stand and let's hear our closing song.